everybody and welcome to part two of my ranking of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I can never resist that intro. Okay, so my Planet of the Apes ranking continues with um, numbers five to one. We're at the top five now um, of the series. I, I'm, I'm ranking all nine movies in order of personal preference. I have ranked the first few so I'll just recap my list so far, just so you know where things are. So number nine is Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. No surprise. Number eight is Battle for the Planet of the Apes. Number seven is Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. And number six is Beneath the Planet of the Apes. So we now move on to number five, which is Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Now, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, I think it's good. It's great. It's 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 great fun. It's the most fun, I think, of the Planet of the Apes movies. It's it's probably the most light-hearted, actually. Um, it's it's kind of like I agree with my subscriber Jack McCullough. Basically, it's the first movie in reverse, where I mean the, the apes go back in time to the 70s after Taylor had left. Um, Zira Cornelius. And this other random ape called Dr. Milo, for some, for some reason. Um, and I, I love this one. I think it's great fun. And it's great to see them living the high life as celebrities. And then um, the whole issue with Zira being pregnant. It does get dramatic towards the end. And the ending is powerful. And very emotionally... It's very sad at the end. When... Um, uh, what's it? When, when they switch the babies around and then the baby dies and then Caesar is actually left in the hands of Ricardo Montalban as Armando and he takes him in the circus. Um, the story's dramatic ending is very good, but everything before that is great fun. Um, and obviously the theory of time travel is brought up. Um, the human characters are good. Um, the villain, uh, I can't actually remember who the villain is. I haven't watched it for a while. Um... He's okay, but I, again, I don't remember him. The two human characters that help them are nice, and Ricardo Montalban, but other than that, the human characters are crap. Um, <clears throat> that's probably the main criticism of this movie. Um, it's, not as, uh, it's not as dramatic as the other ones. Um, and, I mean, they pretty much continue the political commentary from the first two. And, as I said... It is basically the first movie in reverse. Um, but I think at its heart, it's good. Um, I do think Dr. Milo is a completely pointless character. Why was he in it? I don't know. He was there to basically explain the theory of time travel. The <clears throat> the idea of time travel. He was used as an exposition tool. Um, but after that, he basically had no purpose. And they just killed him off. His death is so random. He dies in the cage. <laughs> Which is so strange. It's kind of weird. Oh, Dr. Milo. Um, but yeah, I don't think this is the best movie of the series, simply because some of the characters are a bit forgettable. Um, at times, the pacing can slow down. Um, and I, I just, I don't think it reaches the cinematic greatness of the next four movies that are in this list. Um, but that's, you know, that's to be expected. Okay, so, <clears throat> number four... Uh, don't hate me for this. Number four is the original 1968 Planet of the Apes. This movie is a masterpiece. These next four movies are 10 out of 10s. Masterpieces. Easily. But for me... Whilst I think this is fantastic, I don't think it's as good as the other three. Uh, we'll get to those in a minute. <laughs> um, I love this movie for what it did. Um, it was the beginning of the series. The, the, the political and social commentary on this um, it is very, very strong. And um, the, we have one of the best movie endings ever with the twist that this whole time the planet was Earth. I mean, it's annoying how on the DVD... They've basically given away the twist. For anybody who hasn't seen it, they'll just go, Oh, yeah, it's on the front of the DVD, so... Yeah. I mean, that's stupid marketing tool. But anyway, 
Um, I like Taylor as a character. I think Charlton Heston is great. Um, we really see him thrown into this situation. And that classic scene where he says, Get your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. And they look... They look so shocked and surprised that he can actually talk. He's a he's a human who can talk. Oh my god, they, they've never seen this before. And um, the character of Nova, I always find very interesting. Um, how she can't speak. She's a mute. Um, and she de she develops a sort of a sort of a bond with with Taylor. Um, Linda Harrison is is a beautiful woman. She's so lovely to look at. She's a beautiful woman. Um, the other two human characters aren't really that memorable. Um, there's some good action moments when it's necessary. The soundtrack for this movie is fantastic. Um, it's it's very um, it's it's very good for its time. I think it won an Oscar actually for its soundtrack. Um, and I just think it's the strongest. I mean the uh, the drama is is great. I mean Franklin J. Schaffner is is amazing, and I love Cornelius and Zira. They are a great pair of characters. Roddy McDowell and Kim Hunter, they are superb, and their friendship with Taylor. Is brilliant. I love the character of Dr. Zaius as well. He causes a lot of tension for the uh, story. So the story is fantastic. Um, yes, it, I mean, technically speaking, it's a bit dated now. Um, but still, now, it, I mean, I, I'd still consider it a fantastic movie and a great start to this series. Um, but I just think the next three movies really do are the crowning jewels of the Planet of the Apes series. So yeah, um, moving on to the top three now. So the top three, and you know what they're going to be. So, but yeah, for the sake of putting it in an order on the list. Okay, so number three, taking the number three spot on this list, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I mean, Rise of the Planet of the Apes was the first one I saw at the cinema, and it was great. This movie fucking blew me away. I was amazed how good this movie was. I thought it was going to be pretty crap, actually. The trailer did not make this look good at all. I was like, oh, yeah, it, it looks okay, but it's another reinvention of Planet of the Apes. Um, but it was actually fucking brilliant. It's a masterpiece. It's so good. I love the story. It's perfect. And the whole concept of, you know, um, James Franco's character wanting to cure Alzheimer's, you know, having the, the virus, then it, um, it works on apes, but it doesn't work on humans. I mean, it works on apes, but it also enhances their intelligence. The story is clever. I mean, and Rupert Wyatt's direction is great. The script is superb because it really sort of foreshadows everything else that happens in Planet of the Apes. I mean, don't be confused. Uh, this is actually a, a reboot, not a prequel. I thought that at first as well. Um, but then, you know, it, it is a, it is established as a direct um, prequel to the sorry, direct reboot to, to the original series after the Tim Burton one, which was ten years before this. Oh, <laughs> it was much needed. This movie feels like a better version of Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Um, I mean, I love that we see the journey of Caesar. The, we see him from his birth, and he's growing up. He's raised by a human. Um, then, he, then he gets taken into captivity. Um, I, I really like it. It's great. And, you know, there's some great emotional moments, and you really feel sad for um, James Franco's character when his father dies. That's really sad. And um, th this movie's dramatic as fuck. Like, um, the scene where they, well, they homage the original... When um, Tom Felton says the famous line, Take your stinky paw off me, you damn dirty ape! Then Caesar just stands up and says, No! No! And the way, he, the way like, all the crowd just goes silent. They, like, this is the first time he's spoken. <coughs> and it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And then it starts off, the, I mean, the climax of this movie is fantastic. It's, it's so good. Um, the music score's fantastic. The production design is great. My only criticism of this movie is that Freda Pinto's character, she's basically a love interest. There's no there's no other reason for her being in the movie. Um, just for James Franco's character. Um, it wouldn't have made a difference to have her out of the movie, to be honest. But I guess they needed some females in the movie. At least one female. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, and um, I I think it's I think it's just awesome. And David Yellowwood was great as Jacobs, and the whole when we see the apes being um, tested on, we actually see Cobra in this movie being uh, experimented on and tortured. Um, that was interesting, very very interesting. Um, I don't think it's the best of the series. Simply because it's a bit short. It's one hour forty-five minutes. It's not very long. I mean, I don't think it needs to be any longer, but um, it's 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 not as like epic as uh, the other the other two movies that follow it. I mean, I think the, the the next two that follow it just elevates it so much more. But this movie is fantastic for what it is. Um, as I said, I, lo I love the way the movie ends when the apes. Basically, it's the start of the apes taking over that's basically what it is it's called rise of the planet of the apes for a reason <laughs> it's for that and andy circus gives a great performance caesar is home i mean that's you know he'll do a lot more talking as the trilogy goes on <laughs> but this is a great way to start the trilogy and the effects are just to die for i mean this is 2011 the effects still look amazing i mean they look even better in dawn and war for the planet of the apes so I'll talk about those in a minute, but this was a great way to showcase. It was different as well. It was different. It was going away from all the prosthetics. It was a new era of technology, the motion capture, and it works. I mean, Andy Serkis, for some reason, this guy is the king of motion capture. He just gets it. He just knows. He just knows how it works, and he knows how to do it. So yeah, um, and that's pretty much the main thing I could say about Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, so, we move on to number two. Number two is Dawn of the Planet. This movie rocks. It's so good. Uh, how did they get even better than Rise? I do not know. I mean, it helps that this movie is a bit longer as well. What I love about Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is that you have a intrinsical three-way sort of conflict going on. You have Caesar and his his apes. Um, his apes. He's, he just wants everybody to, to basically exist in their own territory. Um, you've got Cobra who's got his own ideals, who wants to basically kill the humans um, for what they did to him in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, you have um, you have Gary Oldman, who basically wants to kill the apes. <laughs> so there's like three different sets of characters going along, and some other humans kind of join Caesar's side, like um, Jason Clarke's character, uh, Malcolm, and his and his group of characters. Uh, they, they join Caesar's side, and it's um, it's very uh, it's very dramatic. This movie it's a lot darker than the first one, and it's a lot more. It has much more of a post-apocalyptic feel. It's set ten years after um, after Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, it's it's awesome. It's so good. Um, it does take its time in certain scenes, but I don't mind that. I think it, it, it benefits from that really. Um, um, the action is awesome. The big climax is brilliant. Um, I especially love the emotional moments, particularly Gary Oldman. Um, his character, there's a scene where he gets out an iPad and looks at pictures of his family and he nearly starts, and he nearly breaks down and cries. I find that very moving, very powerful stuff. That's really great. Um, the music by Michael Giacchino is awesome. The guy, he, he just gets... Sorry, I keep getting messages. Um, Michael Giacchino just seems to get so much work nowadays. He's he's scored pretty much nearly everything: Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Planet of the Apes, Pixar, uh, Mission Impossible, Super Eight. You know, he's done so much. I mean, I'm not I'm not, I'm not criticizing at all. I think he's a fantastic composer. He'll be the next John Williams, um, and you know, the music rocks. I mean, I mean, if you think his soundtrack is great for Dawn. Wait till you hear his score for War for the Planet of the Apes, because that one is just, wow. This movie's a masterpiece. I mean, the general kind of premise that the humans basically want to um, basically build a dam so they can keep the water supply 
within, but it's in the area where the apes are, so there's a bit of awkward tension there. I think it's simple enough, it works. It doesn't need... People criticise it as being a bit basic, but, you know, I, I don't mind it. I think it makes sense, <laughs> you know, it works. Um, and I love the moments um, when they go back to Caesar's house. Um, the old house where Caesar used to live, um, which has now all been destroyed. Well, sort of semi-destroyed and covered over with vegetation. Um, James Franco's character, we are to assume, has just died over the ten years. Because um, as we know, at the very end of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, in that post credit sequence, that pilot um, who caught the disease off Franklin um, took it round the world. <laughs> so, yes, um, that's a very... Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's a very that was that's that's a very interesting explanation. Um, I love the final fight between Caesar and Cobra. It's epic when when he's hanging from the edge and you know um, Cobra says ape no kill ape. Caesar says to Cobra, "You are not ape," and it's it's brilliant. Andy Serkis gives another fantastic performance. This movie is visually stunning. I mean Matt Reeves is a superb director. After seeing War for the Planet of the Apes as well as this. I can confirm that Matt Reeves is amazing as a director. And I hope Matt Reeves gets a lot more um, great material to work with in the future. Because he's fantastic. I mean, this this is how a Planet of the Apes movie should be. And this, this is something that the series has seriously lacked for so many years. That edge. And, you know, it is a perfect continuation after Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It raises the stakes. I mean, maybe the one downside to this film is that there, the human characters don't get too much to do, but I don't really care too much. I mean, Jason Clarke, he's, he's, he's serviceable enough. I mean, you're only going to see them for this one movie. So, I, I, I pass it off. I pass them off. They're fine. They're good. There's one moment where um, Jason Clarke's character, his son, um, has a moment with Maurice, the Caesar's ape, uh, Caesar's uh, orangutan, where um, he's, like, drawing... And stuff. I thought that was very sweet. There's some very sentimental moments here. Um, and the ending is very moving when um, Caesar says goodbye to Malcolm. Um, that was very sad. And, you know, he, they, they, become, they become friends and he's, he trusts him. And the moment uh, on the video camera when Caesar looks at the video of him and um, Jason, no, no, sorry, James Franco and um, Jason Clark says, Oh, who's that? He says, and he says to Malcolm, he says, Good men. Like you. I thought that was lovely. That was just lovely. And Caesar's, Caesar has a wife and son now as well, which is great. And obviously Caesar has another son who uh, who gets born in this movie. We don't know his name yet. We know, we find out that he's called Cornelius in the next movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, this movie just completely blew me away. I thought, oh my god, that was so, so, so good. Um, but... Yeah, no, um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is awesome. However, unfortunately, it's not my favourite anymore. <laughs> um, a new film has overtaken it. Um, I, I don't want this to seem very harsh because this movie has just come out, but my favourite Planet of the Apes movie is War for the Planet of the Apes. This movie fucking rocks. It's awesome. This is a masterpiece. How how in God's name did they make this movie? This is a fantastic film. I mean, don't be misled by the title. It is called War for the Planet of the Apes, and there is action in this movie. But there isn't as much action as you might think. It's very character-driven. It's very story-focused. But I like that. It's more referring to the war within oneself, the war, you know, Caesar's inner war, you know, his confliction with the fact that he's he's becoming more like Cobra after the tragic event that happens at the beginning of this movie, um, when he's trying to, you know, he's going on a quest to kill the colonel um, due to the tragic event of the, of the beginning. Um, and I love that constant 
you know, in a conflict with that Caesar has of this movie. This movie is dark. What amazed me most is, is the darkness, the brutality. Matt Reeves, you know, had pulls spares no expense with this movie. It is dark. It is gritty. It is brutal. Oh my god! I mean, you see the apes get whipped in this movie, and it's so horrible. I mean, when people die, it's shocking. I mean, when the ape Luca dies. Oh my god, that tugged the heartstrings. This movie's so emotionally draining. In a good way. You feel by the end, oh my god, that was quite... It was heavy. It was a heavy, draining experience. But I thought it worked so well. It is beautifully shot. The cinematography is outstanding. It looks fantastic. I mean, the visual effects look great in Dawn and in Rise. But they look even better. How? Oh, I mean, how did they do it? It looks so good. And what I also love was the story. I mean, not the most original of concepts, but it, they, they did it very well. It worked. Um, the idea of uh, the prison, um, the workforce, I thought was um, interesting. Uh, to build the wall. And when you find out the reason why they're building the wall and, you know, why the colonel is the way he is and his motivations. Brilliant. Fantastic. The script is written superbly. And um, the whole... Uh, introduction of the disease um, which prevents the humans from speaking after a certain time uh, obviously which is the uh, the virus which spread so that eventually it would you know remove speech um, which is what happened to um, the little girl named Nova yes they they reintroduced Nova in this movie um, she's a little girl um, the young actress is very good um, it actually this movie actually acts as really as a prequel to the first film to Planet of the Apes uh, in 1968, which is brilliant um, in that sense. And um, Nova's so sweet in this movie. She's so sweet. Um, there are some moments, like, she forms a sentimental attachment with uh, with Luca, um, who sadly dies shortly afterwards, which is a shame. And then she goes into the camp, somehow undetected, and um, provides Caesar and the apes with food and water. And Andy Serkis... What a fantastic performance. He's going to get snubbed. He's going to get snubbed of his best actor, Oscar. Once again, Andy Serkis does not get enough recognition from the Academy that he deserves. Um, his, his, the way he's done the voice, the movements, it's so good. I mean, when you watch the breakdowns of, of the motion capture and how he does it, you completely appreciate it so much more. And I know that Serkis is physically doing all these movements and, you know, conveying all these expressions. And... I love the scene where um, one of the apes is being whipped by Donkey, who's the ape who's basically turned to the bad side, and Caesar stands there and he says, "Leave him!" That was that sent a chill down my spine. There was total silence in the cinema because I've seen this movie about three times now, um, and then you know, and all the apes start cheering, and I mean, the, and and the soundtrack by Michael Giacchino, superb, superb. Herb. I can't praise this movie enough. I literally have no problems with it. It is very long. Yeah, it's, it's two hours, 20 minutes. It does take its time. It's a bit of a slow burner. But just stick with it. Because it's worth it. It really is. You get such a great study of character. You feel the emotional conflict within Caesar. How this time... This time, they, the humans have gone too far. The colonel... The character of the Colonel is amazing. And, you know... The, and, obviously, the end of the movie is tragic. Which I, I won't say what happens. But it did remind me of Logan. Uh, I'll say that. Um, a lot of people might find this movie too slow. Um, I, I didn't mind it being slow. Because it built up to the ending. I mean, and when the action is there... It's brilliant. It's spectacular. It's epic. It's everything you could want. Um, I also like the inclusion of Bad Ape. I thought he was funny. Um, he's not like laugh out loud hilarious, but he got a few chuckles out of me and definitely was uh, the much needed light relief of the movie. Um, and, and yeah, the production design is, is fantastic. It looks amazing. Um, I like the character of Winter as well. I thought he was an interesting ape. And when, and the scene when they interrogate him, um, is really, really intense. Um, there's so many intense moments in this movie. Most of the time I just sat there with like... My, with my jaw dropped, like, 
oh my, wow, like, it blew, it, it blew me away, <laughs> it seriously blew me away, and I think it's the best Planet of the Apes movies, the best of the Planet of the Apes franchise, because it had the balls, it just had the balls to go dark, and it, it wowed me, the story was spectacular, the action is spectacular, you know, everything, and the writing, the script is superb, and given that the ending that is on this film, you could potentially uh, see this as a prequel to the first film in 1968. Uh, although there are plans of uh, they are thinking about doing another film in this rebooted series. Um, I would actually be happy if this was the last one. And I want to actually try and see this movie again before it finishes its run. Because I, I think it's so, so good. Um, that's it, guys. That's my ranking of Planet of the Apes. So... Let me recap my list for you. Number 9, Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton one. Number 8, the Battle for Battle for the Planet of the Apes. 7, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. 6, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. 5, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. 4, um, the original Planet of the Apes. 3, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. 2, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And 1, War for the Planet of the Apes. So, that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Put your comments down below. Let me know. And stay tuned for my reviews of How to Train Your Dragon 1 and 2, and my review of Kingsman Secret Service. So, thank you guys all for watching, and as always, I'm Mr. Tardis11. See ya.